of an era. David Beckham announces his retirement from football after 20 years. Welcome along to CNN FC. Golden Balls is bidding goodbye. It's every athlete's dream, every footballer's dream to go out on the top, uh, you know, on top form or winning a trophy. You know, it doesn't happen uh, that often, but, you know, I've been lucky. Obviously, when I left United, uh, we won the league. When I left, um, when I left Madrid, we won the league. Uh, like you said, leaving the Galaxy, you know, uh, doing uh, two years of winning the championship there. And then, obviously, coming here and winning the league. Um, it's nice to it's nice to go out like that, you know. I think people look back and you know, it's it's written, mm -hmm. you know. It's simple. You're leaving as a champion, and uh, I think that's why I think that it's the right time. We've got a full strength team in the studio with us this week. Welcome along to the only person to have won both English and French Player of the Year. It's former French international David Ginola. And we've got a legend of the British footballing press pack and former sports journalist of the year. Welcome along to Mr. Patrick Barkley. And completing our starting lineup, as always, our stats superstar, Ben Wyatt. Thank you very much, Amanda. This week, I'll be using the Squawker Stats Board to break down Beckham's awesome footballing career. But it's your views and questions that really drive this show, and we want more of them. What do you think about Golden Bulls hanging up his boots? Some of you have been Skyping in already, but if you're online now, you can contact the show. You can go to Facebook or our website on cnn.com slash football club, or you can use our hashtag, which is CNNFC live on Twitter. You can see some of these tweets coming in now, many of them on our topic of the week. Who has been the biggest managerial flop in the Champions League? But Amanda, I think there's another topic which is headlining the show. Indeed there is, Ben. Yeah, thanks very much. David Beckham has said he is calling it a day at the end of the season after an incredible 20 years that has seen him win league titles in England, Spain, America and France. He's won the Champions League, captained England and been named Britain's most influential person. So, only one place to start. David, what was your reaction? I suspect you might have had a little bit of an inkling. Well, uh, I want to be completely honest. I'm not surprised uh, because uh, we had a chat uh, a few weeks ago when he would play his first game in Paris. And um, he seems uh, very concerned about the, pro the new project of the, the investors in Paris. But uh, in terms of football, uh, he was questioning his uh, fitness level. Uh, he didn't know if he was able to play at, at this level uh, anymore. So. Uh, you know, when I heard the news today, I, I thought, well, that's the David Beckham I met a few weeks ago. What do you think, Paddy, the right time to go? I think absolutely. I mean, it's been a long, slow retirement, um, so it'll be, it'll be hard to tell the difference because it, 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 his time with Paris Saint-Germain was uh, not influential in the footballing sense. Uh, in terms of propaganda and you know, PR, it, it, you know, it, it's always successful. It, it, all he has to do is uh, cough and it's the news. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, really, he didn't do much more than that uh, at Paris Saint-Germain. But uh, even, you know, a lot of times he, he has confounded us, you know. I mean, for, for example, when he went to Real Madrid, people said the same, you know, that it's, it's uh, you know, shirt selling and, and so on. And he won the helped. Uh, Fabio Capello's team to win the Spanish title, which is a serious, you know, one of the most serious competitions in the world. So, uh, yeah, he's been a good ambassador for the game as well as uh, for the brand. He's had such an illustrious career. There's so many different talking yeah. points, so much to bring out of it. And as you'd expect, there's been loads of reaction on the social networks. Let's have a look at some of it. Uh, this is the end of an era in football, says uh, one viewer. It's so sad, the heroes who made some of us love football have to leave. Samuel Schola says it's better for football, also good for him and family and for the beautiful game. 
We're all football lovers and we're going to miss him. And Ahmed Youssef tweets, lost a great advocate of our game. He's always shown professionalism and love for football. Ben, there really has been an incredible reaction. Uh, what's your take on it? Well, that's right. It's one of those stories like the retirement of Alex Ferguson, isn't it? It really affects people right across the football world. You can see here, these are the latest tweets or the tweets that just when the news broke with the hashtag Beckham from Asia all the way to the west coast of America where of course he played with the LA, LA Galaxy. He's one of the most famous sportsmen in the world and not just because he's married to a Spice Girl, he's also not a bad footballer either. This is the silverware he won with Manchester United, six titles, uh, two FA Cups and that famous Champions League win. And he was one of those Englishmen, a rare breed, that actually travelled pretty well as well. The first Englishman to win four titles in four different countries. Uh, there was two in La Liga with Real Madrid. He picked up two MLS titles with the Galaxy. And then finally, uh, that championship win, about to be crowned with PSG. Uh, and there was also that time where he was with AC Milan and the Rossen area as well, but didn't win with anything uh, with those guys. Now this is, as I say, the kind of topic that gets fans talking all around the world and we can bring in our first fan for this week's show. This is live via Skype and this is Francisco from London. Hello, how are you? Um, well, first of all, I want, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity and I would like to ask you, uh, would Beckham enjoy the same success if not uh, Alex Ferguson? Uh, it's an interesting question there from Francisco. Uh, Paddy, you yeah. spent a lot of time with yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson, have, have yeah. written a book. Mm. What do you think? How influential was Sir Alex on his career? Well, I think, you know, Ben talked about professionalism. I think that uh, Beckham would have been successful um, under any good manager. Obviously, Sir Alex Ferguson's a great manager. Uh, Beckham himself has talked about the Ferguson as a father figure and so on. Um, but he, he spent most of his career wide under Ferguson. Ferguson had a very pragmatic idea about how he could play. I don't know, perhaps in another, under a different management, he could have, uh, I always felt he could have been a platini type of a player, you know, to, uh, midfield, attacking midfield. I think he could probably have scored more goals. But Ferguson identified his role as making goals. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, you can't argue, 150, something like 117 caps for yeah. England. Yeah. Uh, some of them in a whole match. <laughs> some, <laughs> of them, some of them just towards the, uh, at the end yeah. of his career. What but, was he like to play against? To play against? Uh, people talk a lot about David Beckham in terms of his passing, his free kicks, uh, his ability with the ball. But uh, David Beckham is also a team player. Is someone who can stick on the wing and do his the hard job we say you know tracking players back and getting the ball back for for his team and he was pushing others as well he was motivating players in a dressing room is the kind of player people don't really know about mm -hmm. because he's always in the dressing room and and it's important to uh, to have someone like like him in a, in a team because uh, because he's not only on the pitch he's also outside the pitch in the dressing room that you win games also very clever you know uh, everyone knows he can take a free kick but he was brilliant at winning free kicks mm -hmm. he had no speed no pace so he developed uh, stopping he would run the defender would go out, uh, uh, would follow him he'd stop he'd take the bump in the back and he'd fall over and he'd then he would have a chance to score from the free kick. So he was very, very clever, very good in his relationships with referees and so on. He was uh, uh, not to be, it's a pity that it looks like he's not going to be a coach because I think he'd be a good coach. Okay, well, it's time for a break now. Not before, though, a reminder to join the conversation online. You can sign in at cnn.com forward slash football club. We would love to hear your thoughts on David Beckham and everything else. You can also log in on Match Days for Live Stats from Squawker as they happen and when CNN and FC returns we're talking more about Beckham and Manchester City post Mancini and if you need any more incentive uh, to stay tuned how about this man to persuade you? Hi, I'm Mario Balotelli, join the CNN Football Club. 
Welcome back to CNN FC. We'll have more on David Beckham's retirement coming up. But there's a new manager heading to Manchester City after Roberto Mancini was shown the door a year to the day since he guided the club to their greatest moment in modern history, their first league title in 44 years. The statement by his club's owners was certainly brutal, but was it fair? Let's go and talk to Ben. You were blogging on this uh, this week. What's your point of view? Well, I think, Amanda, if you look at the Champions League, Roberto Mancini was pretty disastrous this season. He spent $82 million bringing in more players to the English champions and failed to win a single group game. Now, you could argue that the group was tough, but it came after failing to progress from this stage in the competition last year as well. Yeah, it's certainly not pretty reading, particularly for the defending English champions. But how does he compare to other managers around Europe? Well, the strange thing is, he's almost not the worst defender. Let's just take some other big spenders in the Champions League. So Alex Ferguson, for example, spent $100 million bringing in players like Robin Van Persie. He failed to get to the quarterfinals for the second time in two years. Over at Zenit St. Petersburg, this was Luciano Spalletti, spent $140 million on players like the striker Hulk. He failed really to live up to expectations, didn't get into the quarterfinals or past the group stages. And finally, who can forget Roberto Di Matteo, uh, Di Matteo at Chelsea. Okay, he inherited that team, but $153 million was spent on those players, players like Oscar and Hazard, the first reigning champions to get dumped out at the group stages. Thanks, Ben. That's very much a hard money view on it, but let's come back to you guys. Do you think that's too simplistic to look at it in those terms, Paddy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, certainly the Ferguson thing has to be looked through the prism of the refereeing decision that changed the game, in my opinion, the sending off of Nani, which I felt was... Uh, maybe you're going to say it was OK in France, but not in England. No. But no. no OK, nowhere. I don't think any, no. uh, nowhere was that uh, <laughs> a red card. But, um, uh, yeah, so you, you've got to look at that. I don't think there's any excuse for Mancini. You know, ben quite rightly pointed out the strength of the group. He also quite rightly pointed out that this is two years in a row, and that's not good enough, uh, given the budget. Uh, yeah, I think Mancini would get my vote, although uh, Spalletti at um, Zenit, I mean, the, that spending is fantastic. But I think the spending at Manchester City was on a, from a higher, a higher base. And, and maybe there's an excuse for uh, Spalletti in that it's a, form eight, a, a, form eight, a team in formation mm -hmm. rather than a team in maturity, which Manchester City should be. Well, the owners have made their feelings uh, definitely clear, but it only took... 13 seconds of City's game against Reading for the fans to start chanting Mancini's name. There's loads of supporters uh, who've been getting in touch with us over the last couple of days, haven't there, Ben? Yeah, and our latest fans come on the show. This is Paul from France who has Skyped in. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. Salut, David. We don't forget you at Paris Saint-Germain, but my question today is about Manchester City. In your opinion, was the addition of the coach's ego to the player's ego a toxic cocktail for City this year and that did not allow them to play at their real level? Well, that was uh, very strong words from Paul in France. What's Mancini like behind closed doors with the players that the fans don't see? Well, I don't really know Roberto Mancini, but from what I heard, I mean, uh, he wasn't a typical manager in the way he managed his team. Uh, but. Uh, we live in a really unfair world, and being a manager these days is really tough. Uh, not because the game, only the game, but the pressure you've got on your shoulder. It seems to me that uh, investors in football these days, they're interested in the domestic league, but mainly in the biggest competition, which is the, the Champions League. So if you look at all the best teams, all the biggest teams in Europe, they're okay to win their domestic league, but, you know, you know, like you said, two years in a row, it was too much did, for City. Did you ever play under, uh, play under a manager you didn't like? Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plenty, but it's not, it's not up to the players <laughs> or to the manager. It's, it, it's really important. Uh, uh, it's not, the matter is not how much you're going you're gonna to bring into the club uh, and into the players. Is how you're going to get the best out of the players. That's the main thing for a manager. OK, please keep your thoughts coming in to us using the hashtag CNN Live and via all the usual ways. You've got a couple of minutes to get involved. And then we'll be back talking more on Beckham.
Welcome back. David Beckham has two final games before hanging up his boots. The 38-year-old has announced his retirement from football. Helping PSG to the league title this season means he's now won 19 trophies, 10 of them league titles, and he's the only English player to win championship titles in four different countries. Well, as you'd expect, the footballing world has been reacting on social media. The former England captain, Gary Lineker, says David Beckham has retired. Uh, a wonderful player, a global superstar and a magnificent ambassador for England and football. Former uh, Beckham teammate Phil Neville has tweeted, David Beckham, what an unbelievable career. Four titles in four countries, over a hundred caps for England and the best ambassador this country has had. And another former England, inter England international, Stan Collymore, says a good luck to Bex. From an England fan perspective, he served the three Lions very well indeed. Well, I've got uh, Paddy and David still with me in the studio. Uh, how much influence has he had, not just on English football, but on the global game? Uh, it's a different kind of player. Yeah, you, we can talk about mm. players in general, but David Beckham is just apart from any other players because uh, not just the fact that he played for in many countries. Mm. Uh, we talk about him like uh, uh, Spanish football, you know, Spanish football, Italian football, French football, American football, English football. He has been all over the place. Uh, we were talking about him as an ambassador. Mm. I think he's the perfect example because when it comes to English football, you know, you, you got a lot of foreigners in this country playing in yeah. different clubs. And David Beckham has been probably one of the best example, the best export of course, from yeah, English yeah. football. And that's, I think, is very important, not just for him, for, but for yeah. the entire football yeah. in this country. He yeah. had so many defining moments. The goal from the halfway line, the goal that yeah. made me never leave a game early <laughs> again, which is what I did and missed that great goal. The, the oh, goal against Greece. Oh, I know, dreadful. Yeah. Um, but he had lows as well as highs and for me what has made him such a great player is how he's come back from those well, the, the first one I think about when you bring up that subject is 1998 in France where he was sent off maybe a little bit harshly against Diego Simeone in the game the great classic match against Argentina and when he came back because uh, England were knocked out in, in that match and uh, when he came back he was we do like a scapegoat in England you know and, uh, and we, we have, have the same in France, don't worry. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's okay. That's reassuring. That's reassuring to know. But uh, he uh, was, uh, I mean, vilified. Um, he was subjected to terrible abuse on away grounds, although Manchester United family, you know, really made sure he was okay in home matches. Um, but uh, he battled through all of that. And a lot of it would have hurt him because, you know, the English football fans, they don't take uh, prisoners, you know, and it was, you know, the family wasn't off limits, you know, the, the nasty things about that. But he came through it all. And he, of course, then, I don't need to tell you that he then became, you know, England's, as you say, pro listen to the tweets, you know, England's most respected ambassador. And uh, I think that's, that's a tribute to him. It, he's tough as well as everything else. He's very tough, and that's borne out by his stats, isn't it, Ben? Well, that's right. We've been through some of the stats of his club career, but he was a great ambassador for his nation as well. Hear how it piles up. He was second only to the goalkeeper, Peter Shilton, in all-time caps for his country, mounting up 115 there. Not too shabby in front of goal either. He averaged around 5.6 games before scoring, so club appearances, 97 goals over 522 games, and for England... Uh, 17 goals from 115 games. Wasn't too bad in the Champions League either. Who can forget that 1999 final when Beckham was in the midfield? Sealed that unprecedented treble for Manchester United. He was capped uh, 81 times in the Champions League by Fergie for United, scoring 15 goals. And this pass map, I think, might be something of a collector's item as we move forward. This was the last time Beckham turned out and started in the Champions League. This is his pass map from that PSG game against Barcelona in the quarterfinals. How are we going to miss those long, sweeping passes up the pitch? OK, thanks, Ben. I'm pleased to say uh, we're joined now on the phone from the United States by Bruce Arena, the head coach of LA Galaxy. Welcome along to CNN FC. Thanks for your time, Bruce. Uh, what's the view from America on this news? 
Well, it's certainly not a sad day. It's a great day because we get to applaud the great achievements of a of a terrific player, a great teammate, a great person, and a great family man. David has meant so much to not only the LA Galaxy but the growth of professional soccer in the United States and obviously uh, around the world. He's uh, he's been a great player and a great ambassador to the game, and 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 we celebrate this day and. We can congr congratulate David and, and, and applaud him for a fabulous career. Yeah, when David Beckham was in the States, he was doing as much off the pitch as he was on it. What impact did he have? Well, he grew the game in this country, and uh, he brought prominence to our league around the world. Uh, not many people knew about Major League Soccer until David Beckham came over to the United States in 2007. And besides all of that, his achievements as a player with the Eye Galaxy and helping us win championships was very impressive. And everything he did, he did well for the game in this country. What kind of influence was he like in the dressing room? Uh, a great teammate, uh, a wonderful role model for our young players, and a, and a person that has achieved so much in his career. And wanted to continue to achieve and win championships and and he did that he was a great influence for our team on the field and off bruce arena thank you very much for joining us uh, we're just about out of time so uh david what will be david beckham's legacy to football <laughs> a lot <laughs> a lot i don't know uh, where i can start um we were talking him as an ambassador I hope he's going to stay in the game to promote football all around the world, as he did as a player, um, and keep going the great man he was, because we were talking about him as a player, but as a man himself, he was just... Uh, I've got a funny story. Uh, two weeks ago, he was sent off in France. He had a red card, and I saw him after the game in the dressing room, and he went straight at me and saying, David! It wasn't a red card. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I could see his passion on his face. He, he could understand. I said, listen, David, we are in France here. We are not in England. In England, it's probably not a foul. <laughs> <laughs> but in France, it's a red card. Uh, well, he was really surprised, so we laugh about it. And uh, uh, So the legacy will be yeah, just, the, just his name. Everywhere we were talking about that as an English player. OK, I'm going to have to stop you there. We're just about into time added on. But before the whistle goes, we've got to have a look at the result of our online poll. We've been asking which manager has been the worst in the Champions League this season. The winner or the loser, you might say, Roberto Mancini. By some margin, 60% of you voted him as the biggest flop in the Champions League. Things just get better and better for him. Game over, though, for this week's CNN FC. Ben, come on over and join us over here. That's right, Amanda. We've got great news about our CNN FC ball and show, which you guys have already signed. It's been signed by all our star guests this season. It's going to be given to UNICEF, who are going to auction it to help support children in Syria. That's fantastic news, and there's more on that special auction on the CNN FC website, cnn.com forward slash football club. While you're there, why not join the debate on the Champions League? The countdown to the final begins in earnest. Thanks to these guys for joining us this week. Thanks to you at home as well. And see you soon. Goodbye.